synthetic electron 3D channel. Ever notice this blank spot under the Centauri carbon tool head? Turns out Elegoo may have left a mysterious missing feature. A built-in under tool head light circuit that was just never used. Let's dig into what's going on here and how you can make it work. Before we get into the project, quick note. It's been almost two weeks since my last video and about a week since I shared my recent cancer diagnosis. I'm still processing everything and while there were a couple of days where I wasn't feeling great, I used the downtime to reorganize the lab, better lighting, new camera mounts, and smoother workflow overall. For those concerned about me focusing on treatment, I absolutely am. That's priority. For me, experimentation and creation are also therapeutic, as long as I don't overdo it. This setup makes it easier to keep creating even on the tougher days. And I just want to thank everyone who's reached out with support and encouragement over the past week. It really means a lot. While poking around the toolhead PCB, I found unused pins on the daughter board header labeled 5V and LED minus. The 5 volt line is constant power, but LED minus routes through a MOSFET whose gate connects to PB4 pin 56 on the STM32F402 microcontroller. To make testing easier, I built a quick bench rig from spare parts I had left over after a warranty replacement on one of my Centauri carbons. I wired up the hot end, both fans, the tool head PCB, and the daughter board right on the bench, powered through a 60 watt USB-C cable with a mail-to-mail -mail adapter from the printer. Printer actually thought it was printing. The tool head carriage was moving normally, but all the real action was happening on the bench. It looked ridiculous, but it let me probe signals and watch the LED behavior without touching the main machine. That's how I confirmed that the five volt line stays live while LED minus runs through that unused MOSFET tied to PB4, the hidden control path Elegoo never used. Naturally, I had to try lighting it up. I scavenged LEDs from old USB lamps and made more than a few questionable solder joints along the way. Nothing lasted long enough to light the print, but it was a solid reminder that stubbornness is part of R&D. Remember those T10 automotive bulbs from the bed mount lighting mod? I had a few left over, and they turned out to be perfect for this. Inside is a small 5 volt LED disc that fits the connector perfectly, well, almost. I soldered the LED PCB's pads to the passive breakout board LED1 pads for the heater, thermistor, and fan wiring with a rework hot air soldering tool. And then I connected LED- to ground. That bypasses the MOSFET and gives an always on light whenever the printer is powered. Once it was installed, the effect was unreal. In the dark, it looked like a tiny alien spacecraft hovering over the benchy as it printed. And the camera loved it. The new light made the footage pop. Way more detail around the nozzle and the first few layers than I have ever captured before. Even the still photos looked professional. With light coming from behind, outside, and from the printer bed mount LEDs, it gave the whole setup a studio lit look right on the printer. I even tried soldering a second LED onto the same T10 disc. It ran hot but survived a full 24 hours and counting of continuous testing. Honestly, one LED is plenty and I'll link the bulbs I used in the description. Since LED- minus already runs through that MOSFET tied to pin 56 on the tool head microcontroller, all it would take is a few firmware lines to make it controllable from G-code. The hardware is already there, it's just unused. For now, grounding LED- minus gives you an always on light, but it's ready for full control whenever Elegoo or the community decides to enable it. This project also reminded me how awkward it is to swap the hot end without stressing those connectors. After pulling that daughter board in and out a few times, I started thinking about designing a replacement. One that includes the under tool head LED, a jumper or switch for connecting LED1 to ground, and a removable header so the OEM hot end plugs can stay connected until the whole assembly comes off the printer. If that's something you'd like to see, or if you've got ideas for other features that should include, let me know down in the comments. I'm still in the planning stage and your feedback will help shape it. Also, a quick note, there's a configuration issue with my store right now and I'm working to resolve it in the next couple of days, but I do still have those fan adapter boards in stock and should be able to start shipping them next week if anyone's interested. And before we wrap up, 
Quick shout out to my 11 year old son, Tegan, who pulled a bunch of A's on his last report card. I'm seriously proud of you, buddy. Keep it up. Thanks again for all the support and encouragement this past week. It really means a lot. I'll keep moving forward one project at a time. Don't forget to like this video if you found it useful. And if you'd like to see similar content in the future, hit that subscribe button and enable notifications. Thanks for watching.